Do you own and control your own identity? Do you know who owns you or where you are? In the metaverse, of course, these are questions that are still waiting to be answered. Many companies and many different invested individuals are working towards answers to these. And in this episode today, I'm going to talk about digital virtual identities and how this is such an important aspect towards the future adoption and mass adoption of the metaverse and the technologies in the hands of individuals such as you and me. And I'm looking forward to it. Welcome to Exploring the Metaverse, where we explore the depths of virtual and augmented reality and the ever-expanding metaverse and how it applies to regular people. Today's episode is inspired by VentureBeat.com, an article here today by Jamie Bosch, and the title here is For the Metaverse to Grow, Mobile Digital Identities Are Necessary. So Jamie starts off the article basically asking the reader, a question. And the question is, what exactly is the metaverse? And obviously, that's a question that I've been asking. And the the more I dig, the deeper I dig, the more I realize that there really is no one clear answer to this question. And the author here also points out a couple of possible answers to that question. One of those answers is, is that it's a fully immersive, parallel, digital 3D world in which we live, play, and work, basically the things that we do in the real world today. And he also goes on to say that it could potentially be a series of interconnected virtual experiences, which we seamlessly navigate with our portable digital avatars and accessories. And I think that point to the digital avatars really is the the theme of this of this episode. And the point really is that these things have not yet been defined. These answers are not entirely clear yet. We do have on each individual virtual reality or augmented reality platform, you know, you have the option to sign in as quote unquote yourself, but that can be an interesting thing in that you can change and you can be someone and something different each and everywhere you go. And I guess that's an absolutely excellent thing in many regards, especially considering that much of the internet works in a very similar way today. But as people, as we move towards this supposed virtual experience, and especially when it starts to incorporate things such as our jobs, our education, our entertainment, social experiences, I think at that point, knowing and being able to carry our identities forward with us really is what draws me into this article, into this to this discussion, because I think it is it's really, really important that when you go to, for example, your your digital virtual metaverse job, of course you want to portray yourself in that professional, business-minded sense and you're not likely to to want to have your avatar dressing in you know, revealing, uh, revealing clothing or, you know, being heard in a manner that's anything less than meeting the standards of your professional organization. But for example, that same individual at the end of their workday, they're going to be potentially going out and socializing and engaging in other activities such as, you know, games and, and, and music and whatever it is that that individual partakes in. And I don't think that their identity that they bring through from their professional day to day is going to be the same side of themselves that they want to share with their friends, you know, after, after work. So the author of the article goes on to break down three key points. And those three points are essentially the technologies that are going to be important for the metaverse to succeed moving forward. And those three points are personalization, of the user's identity or identities. And that speaks very well to, to my point that from one time of the day to another or from one day of the week to another, from one platform or experience to another, we don't always wish to present ourselves in the exact same manner. The second point is the ability to carry identities across platforms. Now imagine if you've designed your virtual avatar to be you know, this 
this punk rock type character with a particular particular hairstyle and particular particular attire and to be able to bring that exact avatar with you from one platform to another it's very appealing instead of having to create a new quote unquote character from one to another this basically gives you the ability or the concept of this carried identity it, it gives a continuity to the experience and i think it's going to draw in people and have them feel more connected to that to that digital that digital identity and the third point is access from the users mobile device. Now, even for me, having thought about this subject to a, a large degree, I think it's a really, really incredible point that that the metaverse doesn't necessarily always have to be on on virtual reality in an augmented reality space. And this this article makes a really excellent point that basically the way technology is moving forward, it's not just going to be you know, tomorrow we wake up and everybody has a VR headset and everything is completely different. No, it's going to take time. It's going to be a gradual shift from one experience to another, just like we had transitioned from an analog world, a non-digital existence into the current day and age here on the 6th of June, 2022, where individuals carrying personal, personal phones, mobile devices, tablets, computers, all these things are commonplace and they're by and the large normal part of society. However, when you look at society across the board from, from all angles and all aspects of society, you realize that there's there's sort of a spectrum. It's sort of a it's sort of a curve, if you will. And on one side of that, you have those individuals who never have had any interest in participating in the digital existence of the world. And on the other side of the spectrum, you have people like gamers. Hi, my name is Matthew and I'm a gamer. I, I really think that those individuals who already exist in a virtual digital world to some degree, it's a very simple, it's a very simple step. It's not really a big deal. Going from a, a, a digital game with a game avatar that represents yourself loosely to a to a job where you create a more personalized, realistic avatar and carry that identity from the job to the school and then from the school to the social event and online in the metaverse. You are you are the individual that you have created. Um, I think that really isn't that big of a stretch for someone such as myself because I've gone from one game to another and used similar characters. And yes, I might have to recreate them on each game. It isn't that much of a stretch to think that over time, individuals will create identities that they use on social media platforms today, you know, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and such, and carry those forward into their more metaverse oriented activities and so i think that that transition that's really the key indicator and that's the key thing that we are going to have to have as a society to 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 really bring on the mass adoption of these kinds of technologies and utilizing what we already own having that smartphone in your pocket i think that's going to be the key because the vast majority of people have some access one way or another to having some kind of a, of a mobile phone. And the author here has a little bit of a statistic that they have done some research. And that's indicated that according to newzoo.com, approximately 4.5 billion smartphone users in the world by the end of 2024 could be online. And Obviously, this is going to be, if such a thing occurs in a, in a widespread way, this is going to be the entry point. This is going to be where everyone filters into the metaverse. Because it's one thing to have the full virtual reality experience, to have the headset, to have the, have the, the, the hand controls, the full body suit, perhaps, the, the, whole, the whole bit. But not everyone is going to be willing, especially in the beginning, to, you know, to, to, to buy into this expensive technology. But if they already own a smartphone and 
you know, they just have to do something very similar to what they're doing now to access this new part of the internet. I don't think that's much of an ask, even for people who wouldn't necessarily identify as as techies or as virtual reality enthusiasts, if they can access a three-dimensional world to do something that they normally do, such as shopping or gaming, in an in easier way, and especially as the technology improves, as the graphical capacity and potentially even, you know, um, projection capacities for smartphones to bring forth um, a virtually portrayed world, it has massive potential that the smartphone transitions society into into the metaverse, into this becoming the norm where you do have access to a cheap headset and maybe, you know, your employer sends you home with one so that you can work online. And it it really, to me, seems a no-brainer. It seems like it's the, the clear and obvious outcome that we're heading towards. And I think that people need to, to keep that in mind. And I think to the original point of the article that the, the digital identities are necessary, I think it's important that we as individuals have some control over that. And I think that there needs to be, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm kind of divided. If I feel like the real life identity in all situations needs to be accurate. So for example, if you're going to work in a virtual sense, yes, of course, you, you need to have your social financial information accurate and correct to your employer. And that's a no brainer. But you know, if your avatar is heading into a nightclub, or you're heading into a virtual game world, does that have to be the same level of transparency? Is that what we need? And I ask you that question. Is it important for your virtual avatar, for yourself in the metaverse to always be you? And what does it mean to be you in a, in a virtual setting? Does that mean an actual legitimate representation of ourselves? Or are we creating a new image of ourselves and is that virtual identity an extension of ourselves or an extension of what we wish to be so i found that i find this topic incredibly interesting and i think it's far more relevant to our daily lives than so many people really give it credit for and i don't think it's actually going to be as much time as you might think before your kids are coming home from school and you find yourself getting the newest apple 3D virtual reality headset just because, you know, the the things that you want to do are there. And so be ready for it. Look for it. And don't be afraid to experience it, especially if it comes to you as an app on your phone or a simple web page that you can log into. I think the sooner you embrace it and find what works for you and your identity, the sooner that we as society can use this technology for good to grow, to connect, to educate ourselves, and to build a truly better future for the next generation. So thank you very, very much for taking some time with me today to think about who we can be virtually and personally in this world and into the web and into the future. Thank you very much for your time. I'm looking forward to the next episode. Thanks again for listening. 